Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this presentation is titled A Story of How You Want Your Retirement Flight to Go and A Story of How You Do Not Want Your Retirement Flight to Go. This is my final flight in the 777. Got a uh, water lay with a, a water cannon salute out of Maui on the trip from Maui back to Chicago with uh, my family on board, kids, spouses, grandkids. This is how you do not want your final flight uh, as an airline captain to go. Now the question comes up, I was hired when I was 29, and you're looking at your future. And the question is, well, am I going to make it to retirement? You know, you can get fired. Plenty of people get fired. Um, you can have a medical problem and be done. Uh, you can have a check ride problem and get fired. All sorts of things uh, can happen. Your airline can go out of business. Talk to any Eastern or Pan Am pilot about that little fact. So there's a lot of reasons why you may just not make it to 60. And of course, if it changes to 65, you go a little farther. It may even change to 67. Who knows? But when you're sitting there looking at a 30 plus year career, you don't know what's going to happen. And when I got hired, the, uh, the major thing that United Airlines did as far as being really senior, well, I'd have been a DC-10 captain flying Chicago to Honolulu. That was the best, biggest, uh, most prestigious trip. That was before we bought the Pan Am Pacific uh, division and then expanded all into Europe. So when I got ready to retire, there were a lot of opportunities. People uh, flew just uh, in the state sort of trips. They flew to Hawaii. They flew to um, uh, international destinations. Uh, I mean, you could go to Beijing. You could go to uh, London. The uh, the uh, op, you know the options were just about limitless, and it depended on what you could bid. I was fortunate enough to bid back-to-back uh, -back Maui trips and. Everything went well, and I'll, and I'll tell you about that. But it's, it's kind of interesting, too. I had some friends. Um, I planned a, a very nice uh, retirement flight. But I had some friends who, well, one guy had a, a kind of a medical problem. He just decided to quit flying. No last trip, no taking the family, nothing. I think that's kind of sad. Another guy came in and sat down at the table. He was flying a Chicago to Honolulu and back and just decided he was done. He had enough uh, uh, sick leave, vacation, whatever left over to take him the, the another six months to retirement. So he came in, he sat down, and he says, I'm done. This is my last flight. And uh, he says, I'm flying both legs. Well, I had great co-pilots, and, and they let me fly extra legs on my last trip. Um, so I got to fly the legs. They were very generous because, you know, normally you trade legs. Um, and they have every right for that leg and they they need their senior uh, uh currency too so uh i hesitated to take a leg and they were very nice to offer it on my my last week of flying but uh, his co-pilot she didn't like that at all <laughs> so here you are you're flying your last trip and your co-pilot's all uh, upset with you but anyway let's talk about the flight that didn't go so well this was a continental dc-10 this uh, was Continental Airlines Flight 603, and it was scheduled to go from Los Angeles to Honolulu on March 1st, 1978. Now, uh, it was a very unfortunate flight. The 59-year-old uh, the captain, very experienced, 29,000 flight, 29, flight hours, and uh, he had been a pilot in the Air Force during uh, even World War II and the Korean War. Now, what happened is the, the aircraft started its takeoff roll at Los Angeles, and they had some recapped uh, treaded tires. And one of these on the left main landing gear, the tread separated from the tire, and the resultant overload caused that tire to blow out. Now, another contributing factor to this accident was the tire pressures on the aircraft were on, on the low side. So this first tire blew out. And what happens is when that one tire blows out, there are four tires on a, a main truck. When that tire blows out, the um, other three tires start to go into overload condition. Okay, that, uh, when the one tire blew out, it 
caused an overload condition on the number two tire. Uh, that also blew out. And then there was another blowout um, almost immediately from the, uh, the number five tire. Pieces of the tire, actually uh, metal from the rims, penetrated the uh, fuel tanks and uh, started, a, uh, started a fire. Now, um, this occurred four knots below V1. Now, I talk about uh, being more prone to go than to stop in a situation um, where the industry really pushes you to go. Now, uh, complicating uh, this was the fact that the runway was wet. Now, at my airline, we'll take and we'll adjust the V1 for wet runways because that makes it more difficult to stop. Now, one of the reasons I am more to the go position is if you have a tire failure and a tire problem, okay, part of the problem, he, he ended up going off the runway. Now, part of the problem that occurs is you don't have the brakes that you had just a few seconds ago. And he lost three tires on the one side and lost those three brakes. So your stopping ability has been greatly compromised. And that that's not a good thing at all. He was four knots below V1 where, okay, he aborted, um, he went off the end of the runway, and uh, 100 feet off the end of the runway, he's now going in on asphalt that is not load-bearing. Um, and he sinks in, and uh, the left main gear broke through this non-bearing pavement, which caused it to collapse rearward. And portion of the failed gear punctured the fuel tanks on the left wing, immediately starting a fire. The aircraft slid to a stop, 664 feet off the departure into the runway and the fire was on uh, the left side of the aircraft. Now the NTSB commended uh, the crew for getting the people out because all the all the slides on the left side of the aircraft were unusable during the due to the fire and the slides on the right side uh, started to fail uh, due to the heat. And of the 186 passengers and 14 crew people on board, two passengers died uh, due to burning and smoke inhalation. There were 28 passengers and three crew members that were seriously injured during the evacuation. Now, to be considered a death, I always thought two people had died from this accident, um, but it was actually four. But for statistical reasons, to be considered a death, from uh, an aviation accident, you have to die within seven days. These two people died uh, three months later. So officially, they were not um, counted as fatalities, uh, which is kind of unfortunate because they actually were. So that is a very unfortunate end to this flight for this captain and not the way you want your career to end, to have a successful career up to that point. Now, my career, like I said, we had back-to-back -back Maui flights in my last flight. Um, I planned this out quite extensively, 12 members of my family. Uh, I dropped them out off on the uh, first portion going out to uh, Maui. Um, I was able to stay uh, a little bit longer. Uh, my chief pilot went out with me, and we had an extra crew member who flew my aircraft back, and then I deadheaded back. Uh, I had some time with my family, then I deadheaded back uh, and flew my uh, last flight uh, out to Maui, and then my final flight to home. So I take my family, grandkids out. They got a week doing all the fun things out in Hawaii, doing all the events. And of course I had a little time, so we got to go out uh, snorkeling. Everybody had a good time with that. Got to do all the fun things you get to do out in Hawaii when you get a week out there. And you can watch the sunsets and look for the green flash. But all good things come to an end. I had my little countdown timer on my phone. I had one day to go. Well, my kids, uh, uh, I didn't know about this ahead of time, but they, uh, they put together a uh, nice little banner and a nice little uh, display at the departure gate. And we had cake for 300 plus of my closest friends and they put up a little board that uh, shows uh, uh, aspects of my career. 
And my oldest son, who is also a pilot for United, I taught him to fly and uh, um, did his OE actually on the Airbus. He jumps seated along. And uh, there's my uh, purser, my chief flight attendant, who uh, came along. Uh, it, it was just a great time. And I announced to the people in the gate area, I said, I provided safe transportation for 36 years for United Airlines, and I was going to do it one last time. And they liked that. So I'm in the cockpit. We're getting ready to go. I got uh, my... Uh, relief pilots there um actually one of them is not that's my son below me here um who is just jump seating and it was kind of fun they they pushed me back and the uh the agents who were available in the ramp people they came down and they gave me a nice send-off that was really that was really cool and uh, heartwarming and then they arranged for a water cannon salute so that's the uh, the final picture you saw there with the with the rainbow. And I departed Maui for the last time as captain. Flew home. So now I was down to zero days of retirement. Uh, they have to make sure that you um, stop flying a couple days before your actual uh, 65th birthday. In this case, it moved from 60 to 65. So uh, my last flight ended uh, the morning of August 10th. and My birthday is August 12th. So we get in at 4 a.m. Everybody gets off, of course. It's quiet. Um, I'm the last one to leave the, uh, the cockpit. In fact, I tell uh, my co-pilots that... Uh, uh, if I try to get into a United cockpit next week, somebody will probably shoot me. But they connected up ground power. I turned off the APU, and I walked out of the cockpit for the last time as captain. I was fortunate to get through a good career with the goal of, as, as all pilots have, I didn't kill anybody. Um, I didn't seriously injure anybody. There were a few little turbulence incidents. Uh, flight attendant actually had a broken toe because a galley um, door fell on it during turbulence. But that was the uh, that was the worst of my uh, injuries uh, to anybody. But anyway, I got through the career finally after a um, total of uh, 36 years. Uh, it would have been 37, but um, I uh, stopped my um, flying one week before 37, and the company. Uh, truncate you. You didn't make 37. Anyway, I digress as I usually do. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed it, found it interesting. And that's the story of how you want a last flight to go and how you don't want a last flight to go. I feel sorry for that, that captain who his career ended in that matter. Thanks for watching.